All right, folks, uh, welcome back to our uh, Saturday session, April 13th, on agents. In the morning, we covered MemGPT. We saw how it could. Uh, you can use the same LLM without fine tuning or anything, but just change your perspective. Think of it more as sort of a uh, in the framework of an operating system. And you saw with the with its RAG ability and memory management how well it could have a conversation or could reason with long documents. The paper that I'm going to talk about now is called Gorilla, and I don't know if I have added the links. I hope I really hope I've added the links. Otherwise, I'll do it right after. Oh, here it is, Gorilla Portal, and uh, I've added the research paper also of Gorilla. I I hope hope yes, here it is. So we're going to do a paper reading on it, but it's best to first illustrate what it can do. So let's go and see a practical example. This is the gorilla's blog of functions. You can read through this, but more importantly, let's go and play with it directly. There, what I'm going to do is just go to a collab notebook with it, let's see what it can do. Oh, so the best is to first, even without introduction, see it run. I'll just run the first cell. And ignore all the things that are written here at this time. We'll come to it a little bit later. And you did that. The second cell I could run, it says prompt. I would like to translate something from English to Chinese, right? So what are you saying? You're giving it a very high level request, isn't it? And what if it could not just give you the translation, but it could produce for you the code that will be the translation functionality, right? And sure enough, when you run this, look at this part of the code, guys, from blah to now, you can say, well, big deal. I can get that from GPT-4 or GPT or any of the older models. So what is impressive about it? Can somebody point out? It might not be obvious. Go ahead. Ignore the fine-tuned model. Uh, no, that is all right. Ignore that. But the output, when you look at the output, right? What is so special about the code that it produced? Gives an example code. That's true. See, what is it's not so obvious what's unusual about it. First, let me point out. First of all, how in the world did it figure out that it needs to use the transformer API? Yeah. Now you can say, well, you know, so what? These commercial GPTs, they also have figured it out and they have memorized all the APIs and done it. What is not so obvious is that if you were to try a lot of these examples, those of you who are using GPTs for code generation, I don't know if you notice that it some it doesn't always produce the right code. It hallucinates. Quite often it hallucinates. How many of you have seen that? It's sort of, you have to tweak the code. It will very confidently produce something that looks correct, but doesn't work. Now, the point of Gorilla is that, and this is where the code generation ability kicks in. It almost always generates the correct code. Right? 
And what it is, is think of uh, something like, many of you know about commercial portals, right? The integrators like Zapier that provide you integration with a thousand API, thousand um, third party tools. It will connect Slack with God knows what, Salesforce with this, with that and so forth, integrators. But can you imagine that you have a zoo of APIs, just give it any public API, add it to the repository. It already knows a vast number of them, a large zoo of APIs it has, it knows. And from the API now, when you ask it to do something, it will, so you can use the command line and it will actually do it for you. But more importantly, it will generate the code to do it for you. And the code is almost always correct. So what it does is it is specifically tuned to APIs, fine-tuned to APIs. It's taken Llama 2, I believe, and it has been fine-tuned on a lot of the APIs. I believe Hugging Face and some APIs were taken. Then when it was fine-tuned, it wasn't done just blindly, like treat it as text. But whenever you deal with API in the language of compilers, etc., people use these words AST. It's called abstract syntax tree. What AST is, it's a little technical, but roughly speaking, it deconstructs what is just a string into its constituent pieces and knows the relationship between those pieces. It creates a tree, a syntax tree. That means this is the line, and this is the beginning, and this is the semicolon. It's a, it, it makes a whole tree of that syntax. So um, all compilers, parsers, <laughs> they work with it. I mean, parsers will help build any string code you write first into AST. All subsequent actions happen on the AST. That's what ASTs are, abstract syntax trees. Uh, it's a, a fancy word, but basically what it means is break it down into a structure that machine, that compilers, etc., can understand. Okay. And code generators all work with ASTs. So is there a paper that describes yeah. the the specific process that Gorilla did, not the AST part, but yeah. what, how yeah, they yeah, did we it? Will do that. We will do that right now. Okay. Thanks. Going to come up. But I started first with example. Then what do you do? The second stage is it, it stores the AST as the document for every API call. And now what it does is the world is full with APIs and those APIs keep changing, isn't it? And also the subtlety is quite often, or two function signatures can look rather similar. You know, you have to be a little nuanced to understand what does what, right? And it, it has been fine-tuned to understand those nuances and to figure out correctly which of the uh, functions that you should use. And uh, it does it very well. I mean, I don't know, if you look at this, do you realize that it says translate into, this is the task, if you're used to the pipeline API of transformers, this is dead obvious, isn't it? Give it a model, give it the task. Task is translation, e n to z n, and return the translation. Give process data, this is it, and it does it correctly. Right? You can play around with it and see that it does. Let's give it a more complex task. You say, I, I want to build a robot that can detect objects in an image some object and so and we will go into this because this is a little but first let's look at the code i hope you are suitably impressed that it it comes up with reasonably like the the point is that this code is a little bit more trustworthy than what you would just get in a llm which can easily hallucinate right? so it is specifically tuned on that and i think this is quite remarkable uh, I would strongly, the, many of you are using the, G, the LLMs for code generation, and you realize that something that has been precisely trained to deal with APIs, you know, when you have software engineers in your company, what are they? They're just precisely trained machines to <laughs> integrate one API yeah. with another API to get some things done. 99% of that's what they do, right? Well, to replace them all comes <laughs> Gorilla. This is the end. So if I, <laughs> I can do this by myself. <laughs> 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 
I've been saying over and over again, soft ending, and we know it is dead. I hope today the gorilla is here. Right? <laughs> and it does that. And let's look at the way it reasons. It's quite interesting. I want to build a robot that can detect objects. Do you see the hierarchical way it goes? Domain, computer vision object detection. Then it says API call. What is a good model? It realizes that you could use data. By the way, we did data, right? Do you guys remember data? We did in our object detection. Right? It, it then determines that a good model to use would be this. Right? It does that. And then it says, okay, hugging face. Who is the provider of that particular thing? This is a hugging face explanation. And then it writes its own steps. And once again, you see the whole, you know, we are in the world of agent and agent reasoning. You see how well it thinks to so input. Chain of thought. Sort chain of, thought, chain sort of, of yeah, thinking of it through. In reflection. Yeah. Import the necessary components from the Hugging Face library, Torch and PIL. It breaks it down to a step. Open the image using PIL, blah. Initialize the pre-trained data. Generate this, pass this thing, and then it does that. And this code is literally a realization of that, right? Not only does it write code, it even writes this understanding of what it did. If only your developers could be doing that. <laughs> yeah. So as a recent explanation, it gets into its training data what the abstracts and that's the language. Yeah. Reformulates it into code. It reformulates it into code. Exactly. Once it has broken it down into steps, now it is doing a rag on its ASTs database. Right? Retrieving the right ones, the most appropriate ones. And do you see how powerful this whole idea is like RAG, etc. It's really taking it to the next level when RAG meets uh, agentic reasoning, how well it goes. Right? This is it. And I don't know about you, but paint me impressed. Right? Yeah. So, see, that uh, ASD is a tree-like structure, right? Here it is a sequence of them. No, no, no. ASD is a representation. Inst it stores that in its rack, in its repository. It indexes that as a document. The document that it indexes is the AST. Are we getting it? So then what will happen? When it searches for this, some of the ASTs will come up in the search results, stop, and then it will determine which is the most relevant AST, and therefore use that AST to forward generate the code. And that AST to generation of code is agent. Yeah. Is agent doing it? This is it. The LLM doing it, right? In, in a, as an agent-like thinking. And isn't that beautiful? Because that is the way traditionally code used to be generated, right? right. From AST to onwards. So the, the insight is take the APIs, shred it into the AST, mm -hmm. and save that as documents in your RAG system. So the right. side effect of this is uh, today it's generating Python code. Tomorrow it can generate R code. Any code. Any code. Any code. Yeah. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is because it is search like, what do, what do search engines do? They keep updating. The moment website changes, they update themselves. So the moment the API changes, your developers are probably not informed. Mm -hmm. They were sleeping. But this guy knows. Gorilla knows. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Right, yeah. and generate UI and yeah. the APIs are connected. That's right. It. And you could do it. Like it can do it. You can, you can, and by the way, the best part of this is there is no commercial license to it. You can freely use, I mean, there's no restriction to it. You can use it any way you want. In your company, you want you want to do that. Guys, do you see what is happening? But that AST generation or sorry, AST training part. Yeah. So that will come to them. That is that is what we'll do. How does the what are the technical details of how it did it? How no no basically let's say if we want to create a specific HT bar for our code base. You can do it can do that. That's what I was saying. Yeah, you can do that. For internal, for internal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you because realize that guys uh, uh, they, uh, they encourage you actually to install it locally and to fine-tune it on your own data. Right? This project is very good. You don't want to do that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, it is like uh, 
<laughs> no, you become super productive, right? Yeah. You run it in your uh, house, and then in the morning you say, "Yeah, I wrote uh, five thousand lines of code." Yeah, you're checking code and just no, you can do it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, guys, I keep telling you that the world has changed. Now we're coming close to the end of the boot camps, and I hope there is no doubt in your mind how much the world has changed. Isn't it? Anybody still wants to go back to their old software engineering jobs? So more than excited, you are scaring us towards the end. This <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> so and this uh, this yoga and this yoga boot camp is supposed to tell us that what are the opportunities here in the world here we have. No, the point, the thing that I'm doing is I'm scaring you out of software engineering <laughs> so that you spend your time in AI. Yeah. Yes, come to the next boot camp. <laughs> Don't miss any of my boot camps, otherwise <laughs> you'll be left behind. So, perhaps you have all this just check in 5,000 lines of code and go for the and nobody will not see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, this is the big message large language model connected with massive AI. So, by the way, they, when they mean massive, they really, it's not a toy exam. They, they have gone very, very serious about it. Okay, sorry, important yeah. question. So, for this, they just need, they, they, this is not trained on the example data, right? They are just mm -hmm. trained on the API spec. All the APIs, yes. API specification. Yes. yes. All the data, yeah. yeah. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, by the way, download, you can run it on a command line. There's a gorilla command line. And it, it looks very funny. The prompt is gorilla. And you say, gorilla do this. And, it, and here it is. It comes up with code. And you're like, you gorillas can do this. <laughs> What's left for that? It's, it's, Dar it's Darwin, uh, Darwin in reverse. Like, next stage of evolution for mankind is gorilla. Gorilla. <laughs> hey, I'm joking. The software gorilla. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, jokes apart, uh, let's get serious about this paper. How does it do it? So, large language models, let's say they're abstract, have seen an impressive wave of advances recently with models now excelling in a variety of tasks such as mathematical reasoning and program synthesis. So, you see that they can do some level of code generation. This is, however, their potential to effectively use tools via API calls remains unfulfilled. So what they are saying is this, some things they can do, but they can't do it well. Actually. This is a challenging task, even for today's state-of-the-art LLM, such as GPT-4, largely due to, to their inability to generate accurate input arguments and their tendency to hallucinate the wrong usage of an API. I cannot emphasize this enough. Let me say that in big, bold orange. How many of you who are using this have seen that if you ask these things to generate code, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Quite often the arguments are right. The most common thing happens, you copy, paste it into VS Code or something, and then it will say this signature method doesn't have this signature, these arguments or something like that. We recall, Gorilla, we release Gorilla, a fine-tuned Llama-based model that surpasses the performance of GPT-4 on writing API calls. When combined with a document retriever, basically, Gorilla demonstrates a strong capability to adapt to test time document changes, enabling flexible user updates or version changes. It also substantially mitigates the issue of hallucination commonly encountered when prompting LLMs directly. And that is an important thing. It substantially mitigates. Uh, we will see that this in action in the, one of the first examples. To evaluate the model's ability, we introduced API Bench, a comprehensive data set consisting of hugging phrase. But that is another contribution that paper makes. There was no benchmark that would test how well LLMs can use APIs and then produce code. <laughs> so they create one. The successful integration of the retrieval system with Gorilla demonstrates the potential for LLMs to use tools more accurately, keep up with frequently updated documentation, and consequently 
increase the reliability and applicability of the outputs. So guys, do you see that whole agent world, tools, using tools, reasoning, retrieving things, and so on and so forth? It is there. Uh, Gorilla's code model data and demo are available in this website, which is what we visited. Now, before I go into anything, just look at the examples. See, the examples are subtle. It is not so easy to tell that it was wrong. Help me, you give me the prompt, help me find an API to convert the spoken language in a recorded audio to text using Torch Hub. This is very specific, right? So what does in Torch Hub, domain speech API provider blah code is this. The only problem is load does not have this there at all, right? And result.transcribe doesn't work. On the other hand, if you, the, the reason for that is the third and the fourth arguments actually are the, the the, the source is local. It just doesn't exist. It's not like that. Right? Now, cloud also gets it wrong. You notice that. Right? The wrong library. It uses, you ask it to use Torch Hub. Instead, it uses Torch Audio. Right? The Now, look at Gorilla. And this is it, guys. When you want your code quickly, the last thing you want to do is iterate over hallucinated code. Right? And it gets it right. And it was a very precise instruction. It wasn't that easy to get it right, just like that. And it gets it right. What it shows, the graph below that is important. It shows accuracy. So again, first of all, notice that this direction is better. Now you want to go top left. Accuracy of gorilla is high. Hallucination of gorilla is very low. Do you see that, guys? Right. Uh, relative to that, GPT and cloud, they seem to delight in hallucinating. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty far behind. Likewise, uh, the llama doesn't uh, hallucinate that much, but it's sort of accuracy is pretty low. Gorilla does well. Likewise, with retriever added to the system, it does uh, even better. Uh, then with GPT retrievers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it begins to do. So anyway, uh, the, the gold standard is Gorilla tends to do very well. Now, how does it work? What does it do? What's the method by which it does? So uh, this is what it does. A system for enabling LLMs to interact with APIs. I think uh, th this paper is best explained just using the figures. Once you got the big idea, right, it is relatively easy. A system for enabling LLMs to interact with APIs. The upper half represents the training procedure. So what do you do? Suppose you have the Torch Hub API. Look at this. This is the API. From the API, what can we extract? Like all of you are familiar with PyDocs. What can you do? You can extract the signature. You can build the AST. Right? Abstract syntax tree, you can get this documentation out of it. Right? Anyway, for each of the things, you can represent it as a JSON. Right? And now comes the concept of self-instruct. What is self-instruct? Um, see, self-instruct was a groundbreaking paper, which I wish I had covered before. But I'll explain it to you succinctly. It is, I think, uh, who 2022 paper. And what it said is that uh, it is a way for an LLM, before it does something, again, agent thinking, it can set a goal. I need to do this. And then I can go about doing it by first doing this, then doing this, then doing this, then doing that. Are we together? Right. That is... So it sets a long-term goal. So it directs its thinking. If you think of it as a chain of thought kind of thing, it directs it thinking. Make sense? Right? Except the chain of thought, the original paper was like 
giving examples, few short examples. Here, you're saying that you set a goal, then you break, break the journey into specific steps, and then you go do the steps. Did we see that in the example just now in the collab? We saw that, right? So the, now we have all of this self in, with all of these examples, and then you train the gorilla, and this gorilla is naturally holding tools in its hand, as you can see. All these APIs become tools. Now you ask this question. I want to see some cats dancing in celebration. Right? So how would it do that? It would go, it would first go rag it, right? API database, rag into the API database, get the right thing, it would get it. Then it would say, okay, input, task generation from test, reference API, it has found the reference API. Right, stable diffusion pipeline from P10. And then it says, okay, Gorilla, API is stable diffusion. And then, and we saw that code happen right after that. But you can see the, what are the components of it. The self instruct, by the way, is an important thing that is there very much in this world of agentic reasoning. So, what is, why don't I do the Wednesday paper reading on self instruct and the related papers? Right? Yeah. One more thing I wanted to mention, maybe it is, it is important. Um, that I have, for a lot of these, right, I have created um, little, on the course portal, if you go to the course portal, I believe not in this course, but uh, all of you have all access also to the introduction to LLM. You, you notice that there's a glossary here. And uh, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to that. A lot of the terms, okay, yeah, self-instruct. I have a whole uh, section on this self-instruct. Okay. And uh, how about this? This Wednesday, I'll read the first paper that started this whole self-instruct. But basically, this is what it is. It's a way of getting to a goal, setting a goal, and then breaking, reasoning through how do I reach that goal. Okay. Oh, this is Wong's paper, Wong, and uh, 2022. And... Uh, Followed by yet another important paper in a in a monologue by again Huang 2022 and a planners planning. Remember what did we said? Agentic reasoning has has planning into it. And more and more, what we are seeing is that LLMs, the new side of LLMs, that they are very good with agentic reasoning. They are planning, breaking it up, doing things, and so forth. So uh, let's leave that aside. Let's go back to what we were doing. So I'll say one question. Yes. So self obviously seems different from pre-training where we mask some part of the system. Completely different. It is like, I need to um, do this. So see, you saw that example. Eh? Uh, here we go. Where was that collab? Import, blah. You see it. Instruct itself. You see that, right? That is that, right? So, and suddenly you're not, you get dancing cats. But guys, just ponder over it for a moment. You gave an instruction like this. I want to see some dancing cats in celebration. It's okay. You can go get an image like this at some application. But imagine getting the whole code to do it just like that. Not bad, right? But fun begins when you mix APIs, like, you know, do this and then do this and this from this API. You see how you can create the whole mashups. Now you have mashups automated effectively with the APIs. So, so awesome. yeah. The instruction generation, let's just see a shot of from the code and then Yeah. It's not it. particular to your permission pairing. No, 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 it has nothing to do. It's just relevant to what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is it. So, guys, I want you to do one thing. I want to keep this one paper reading a little. This is the whole tree, <coughs> the AST subtree match to evaluate. <coughs> right? <coughs> How do you do that? Uh, this is walking the subtree model, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, it needs understanding of AST, which I think most of you do understand what it means. But anyway, if you look at the benchmark numbers, of course, they're very impressive. Uh, and good. Uh, Gorilla does quite well in these things. 
is it practical? Is it being used? Oh, heavily, heavily. Gorilla, if you go to the Gorilla website, there is a, a lot that is happening here. If you go to the, this is the home of Gorilla and look at the blogs. I would, this is literally a little corner of the world in itself. I would strongly encourage you to go read these papers. Oh, somebody has even written an introduction to Gorilla LLMs. Yes. So guys, what I will do is, this was a short paper reading because this is best done with examples. Can I give you guys an hour to make yourself good at, or hour, hour and a half? Become good with Gorilla, guys. You're looking at something very, very powerful. Can you guys give time to this today, right now? If you don't give time now, you won't give time later. Become familiar with it. Then we will have a half an hour discussion. On, we'll share our experiences using Gorilla. How's that? And do something unique. Like don't just follow the example. Come back with a notebook in which you do something unique of your own. <coughs> Are we making sense? Okay. Find out. Pick, pick something you want to do. Have Gorilla do it. Get the code. Showcase it. And we'll do a show and tell with Gorilla after that. Uh, with, <coughs> on Gorilla after that. Make sense, guys? So you have one hour to do it, and then we'll have a shot. And I would like everyone to participate and show something. Guys, it will be a short exercise. Eh? Do it.